Hi, everybody. Let's see. We're just waiting for Richard now. Let's see. Could not I, out. I couldn't figure it out. I was like, where's the button? Where's the button? Someone, no one. Yeah. You got it. The button. Yeah, I got it. I just had you got to it. someone. I'm like, how do I, how do I do this thing? How, where's the button? There's no button. It's all you gone wrong. You should have practiced ahead it's of time. It's all gone wrong before it started. <laughs> I actually, you know what? I thought, I'm going to have a rehearsal. I'm going to sit in there and I'm going to have a rehearsal at eight o'clock for half an hour by myself. I'm going to try and imagine all the questions that she's going to ask. And I'm going to answer them to myself, test the video, check my hair, which is okay. And all's going to be well. And then I thought, nah, I'm just going to sit and watch an episode of The Sopranos and have a glass of wine instead. So that's what I did. So I apologize for being late. Are it's you going to say, uh, you should have practiced a uh, song for us. Don't you. Don't you even. We've been here before. 92Y. You're, you're just being cheeky. Anyway, you're just being cheeky. Happy Droughtlander, Richard. Yeah, I know it's um, it's officially begun, isn't it? This is the first day officially of, of Outlander. Um, how how are you feeling? Are you all right? Are you okay? Are you going to survive? It's a long. It's going to be a long uh, journey now. We're kind of in the middle. No filming for a while. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, filming has been uh, filming's been postponed, hasn't it? So um, <laughs> delayed for I don't know obvious obvious reasons. But who's to say when we're going to get back uh, up and running again? So <laughs> it's a funny time because I think I was trying to think and I couldn't remember if we're normally filming already by the time a season finishes airing, which I think we are. I think you usually are, yeah. So it's very much a droughtlander for us. <laughs> Too, for the cast because it's just finished and we're all like what do what do we do what do we do um do you know what we could do i'm thinking if we all get together the cast maybe a couple of creatives and just we can try and film a couple of um sort of intermission episodes of outlander at home remotely with each other who's gonna write them diana is diana yeah gonna write diana can write them and we can make a parody of outlander and we can all switch parts. So we'll do Outlander, 
the the lockdown version. It's like Outlander 5.5. I would watch it. I'm sure there are a lot of people who would watch it. I would watch that. I think that would be hilarious. How are you staying busy in quarantine? What You're watching The Sopranos. <sighs> yeah. Horticulture. There's plant arrived <laughs> today. Um, there's a few plants arrived today. I, 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 keep, <laughs> I, keep, I keep flowers now. <laughs> they look good. Hey, another way, I, I was showing some people this recently. I've, um, I've got back into painting these wee uh, Warhammer guys. That's a lot of fun. That takes up a lot. Of fun. That takes up many, many, many hours. I can assure you. Um, but no, I, in serious. So I, uh, I've just been kind of staying active. You know, I've got a kind of a, a kind of a work week planned out where I've got a certain amount of exercise I want to get done, a certain amount of uh, running and working out. But I've also got things, uh, you know, to keep me busy, sort of work wise in terms of photo shopping reading and uh, I like to do my guitar practice and work on various things. So I like to make sure that I'm staying sort of mentally active as well as physically active throughout the week. And the place has never been so clean. It's so clean. It's so, so clean. I have a rota now. I have a clean <laughs> rota. I'm so domestic. If anyone who's interested out there, I'm, I'm so domestic. Um, yeah, I know how to steam clothes now. Pretty good at that. Oh, wow. Turns out I'm pretty good at cooking. <laughs> In my opinion, in my own opinion of myself, I'm pretty good at cooking. Um, I have to find some volunteers to test that, maybe. But um, I've been playing a lot of games, been catching up with a lot of television. I had kind of, um, I had kind of ended up with quite a quite a list of uh, television to catch up with over the last sort of year or so. Um, so I'm doing that, playing a lot of video games. You know, it's actually. Not that much has changed for me. I know this has really shook a lot of people kind of to the core in terms of their, 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 um, their, sort, of, uh, their sort of habits and their sort of rituals and their, 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 their day-to-day norm. But I was thinking about this recently. I'm like, what would I be doing if there wasn't a lockdown? I'd be kind of in lockdown anyway. I'd be, I, I usually, you know, I, I like to lock myself <laughs> down now and again for a good game or... Uh, some telly and um, you know it just happens to be a very very extended version of that so what about you what are you are you doing a lot of uh, are you doing a lot of online stuff are you doing a lot of... I'm watching a lot of Outlander I don't know what I'm going to do when, I, when it's over watch it again yeah, this is what go. listen everyone what to do when Outlander is over is you go back and you watch it again from season one or you're not... you read some of it and then you go back. But a lot of people have already done that. Like, I know the people who I've, I've seen who have been tweeting, um, who uh, have already watched it like two or three times. And I'm like, hasn't it just come out about an hour ago? But they've already seen it like a bunch of times. Love those fans that just, they can't get enough. Well, show. do you follow the Outlander at Midnight hashtag? That's for everybody who watches it before it airs in the US. Do you know, they, I was thinking about this, right? They're such a good bunch of people. The fans are such a good bunch anyway, but I love how the Outlander at Midnight people on a Saturday night kind of have, they have a bit of a discussion, but they still save it all until everyone else is watching it on Sunday night. I think that's so respectful to the rest of the fans. The way that there's no spoilers, rarely, every now and again one escapes, but they try and keep the spoilers, you know, free. And um, they might exchange an opinion on it, but they still wait for everyone else to catch up on the Sunday. And then they all have a big, you know, they all kind of live tweet with each other or kind of get on the same bandwagon rather than being kind of divided between the two nights. I like that. That's um, the solidarity there. On the they're, they're a good well, crew. Done. Well done. Well they're done. a good crew. All right, let's talk the finale. There's so much to discuss. No, um. let's just talk about something. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So we have a lot of good questions on Twitter. So I'm going to start with one of those. Um, the season begins with Roger being adamant he wants to return to the 20th century and ends with him saying Fraser's Ridge is home. Can you talk about that journey and what's changed for Roger? Repeat the question. I've, I lost the second half. Can you talk about Roger's journey from being adamant he wants to return to the 20th century to him saying that Fraser's Ridge is home? What changed for him? Now, that was a good question. I don't think it was any one change. I think it was a gradual... I think it was... Well, first of all, I think it was just that thing that that was his mission from the start. So I think there's this, there's this thing at the forefront of his mind that has always been, I'm going to get Brianna and we're going to go home. We're going to go back to safety. I think that's always been his kind of mission, but 
it, it sort of lost its weight. He hadn't realised that, though. It kind of transformed um, through him being at Fraser's Ridge and being more accepted into the family and proving himself as a family member. Um, and and um, sort of... He's already, you know, he he's, he's already has a kind of a deep respect, in spite of the differences of of Jamie, and in spite of what has gone, what has kind of preceded them. He's always loved Claire, so I think he's very much just really fallen in love with that family and with that group. Um, but you know that way where something you sort of cling to something that isn't real anymore. This mm -hmm. idea of going back home, but home for him obviously has changed without him realizing it. It's changed in his heart but there's still this sort of subconscious thing that he has always had the intention of coming back, helping Brianna do what she has to do, which is warm her parents, and then bugger off back to the 60s, 70s, to safety, to where they belong, because they don't belong there. So he's, he's being logical. He's being a man of sort of reason mm -hmm. when he's thinking that, not, not realising himself that actually deep within him, he has taken Fraser's Ridge and he has taken Jamie and he's taken Claire, he's taken Marcel and Fergus to be his family. That is truly, truly where he belongs. And I think had Roger stopped to even think about it halfway through the season, before that point happened, before they, you know, decided when he returned home, I think Roger would, if he was actually to give it some thought, would think, no, my family is, this is my family. Mm -hmm. This is my anchor and this is my home. And if he was to maintain that, you know, that idea of going home, it would it would be purely for practical, practical purposes of safety and keeping right. his family safe and it being a safer time, like that conversation that he has with Claire earlier on in the season where Claire says, you have to go back, you know, obviously I love you guys and I'm going to miss you, but, um, you know, for the sake of the family and for the sake of the safety of the family, you, you, you have to go back. So... That in itself is, is a bit of a thread. That was a journey. That was a whole process for mm -hmm. Roger. Um, and I think the realisation was a very happy one for him at the end. I think when he realised that, I think he thought, yeah, no, th this is right. This is absolutely right. This is where both of us belong now. Um, and it's a, really, uh, it's a really touching moment. I think it's a really, really nice moment in the show when that happens, you know. Were you and Sophie jealous at all of everyone else getting to film the Thanksgiving yes. scene? Yes, sexy stuff. Is that what you're going to say? Yes, yeah. always. And every day. <laughs> and then I think we shot some of it. And I was like, why aren't we involved in this? Why are we in like a car crash or whatever? What, who have we pressed off is what I thought. Like, who have we annoyed? We've annoyed someone. Why can't we be in the 60s stuff? We be, we're from the 60s. If anyone is versed to be in the 60s, if anyone's had practice to be there, it's me and Sophie. But no, the story obviously wasn't very accommodating for us there. So we um, we walked off set in absolute anger and frustration. <laughs> we I can't imagine that. There were story reasons, obviously, why, you know, it, 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 there was impact to that element of the story. So it served its purpose, but it was just unfortunate. And I, I wasn't even there the day that they were all dressing up and all the 60s stuff. So I didn't get to see when I was like, I, can't, I would love to see Sam and 60s stuff. And, Duncan and, and young Ian, I heard he's going to be in the army. I was like, oh, what? You should have asked them to freelance you out as the photographer for the day. Right? You got to be thinking. You got to be thinking two steps ahead. Well, I, I mean, it was such a great idea. I loved that idea for the flashbacks. It was very, very clever. So, good. What's your favorite photograph you took on set during season five? What kind of a question is that? It's like asking what my favourite day was or what my favourite breakfast was. Well, those are um, also coming, so prepare <laughs> yourself. No. Um, uh, what was my favourite photograph that I took on set? I think it's one that has never m made it online and probably won't because, you know, I'm keeping it there. Um, it's a portrait that I did of uh, Brianna, of Sophie, on the beach, sitting on a boat. Um, it's a beautiful shot. Um, other than that, there's the big group shot at the wedding that just the line of everyone kind of disappears into a thin line in the background. That's, I love that. And uh, the one with um, with uh, Tim as Governor Tryon standing mm -hmm. and I've given there the red coat's pink. Have you seen that one? I love that. I think it's so, just, yeah. Just, that's a fun it's one. the expressions on everyone's faces, the expression on Tim's face. It's just the humour. I mean, Tim's got such a great humour, which I love, and it's just... You can see that playfulness, that humour just really coming out in that one shot. 
Um, so I kind of love it, love it for that. Who's the bigger troublemaker on set, you or Tim? Oh, or Tim. Ah, <laughs> uh, probably Tim. He's just always full of the, he's just always full of the, the gags, man. He's, he's, uh, he's a lot of fun. He's very witty. Um, everyone, I think everyone has their moments. So such a good cast for that that you know we all kind of gel, and especially when there's a big group of us, which there has been several times this season. This season has been great for it. Um, you know, you just you have a good laugh, and uh, it just makes it all the more kind of special being part of something which is already you know a really great thing to be part of. What was your favorite storyline for Roger this season? He goes through a lot, and you have some really strong episodes, so you have to pick just one. I have to pick one storyline. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But what if I say that they're all part of the one bigger journey? What if I say that they're all part of his transition of his um, of his evolution? No, Is that you not? have to ex no? you have to expand. Give us some nuance. Ah, right. Well, if I'm going to pick one specific thread, I suppose it's going to be the Alman stuff into the hanging. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's a real turning point for him. That's a real sort of catalyst for him. It's it's that in itself is is a real. I mean, Roger's been on that kind of uh, that journey since season four of of change because he has to he has to adapt to the time, he has to adapt to being someone that he's not because he has to you know he has to take on uh, skills and trades and ideas that he's not that that that, that don't sit easily or, or aren't normal for him in order to appease Jamie in order to. Um, to, to fit in with the times in order to provide for his family. Um, so he's been kind of on this kind of journey of change, but he's had certain catalysts throughout it, which have sort of accelerated the process. You know, he's had a lot of trauma, he's had a lot of big things happen. And I think the hanging was a real make or break point, especially at that, you know, that point in the story where him and young Ian really help each other out because mm -hmm. they have that, so they see that sort of mutual thing in each other where they, where they really help each other out because they are both a kind of breaking point. And I think it's in that journey of sort of, it sounds so cliche, but it is a kind of a self-discovery. He sort of realises that he's not trying to find the man that he was anymore. He has to accept that that man's gone, that man's different. He's, a, he's just a different, changed man. It's about embracing that. So that, for me, I think was a nice shift in the character mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was a while coming. It was, it's nice. That's good for me as an actor because I can kind of get my teeth into that sort of thing. We did have a question from Twitter. Do you prefer to play Professor Wakefield or Roger Mack? What a question! <laughs> what a good question. Um, you know, I, I keep I keep saying this, but it's, it amuses me that to have watched how a lot of these characters on the show have have come along and um, progressed, and how the, all these new relationships are forged between people that characters that you knew well, but relationships which are brand new, which which I, I love. And one of the things that strike people often post gifts gifts and memes online of, of, of Roger Wakefield. There's one that I keep seeing, and it's the one where Roger appears at Brianna's door at Christmas and he rings the bell and he's like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I look at that and I think, that man is so long gone. He's just, he's so <laughs> gone. Um, and I look at what, you know, Roger Wakefield has kind of become or has, has, has been forced to become or out of necessity has become and I think they just appear to me to be such contrasting people. I'm not even sure they would get along mm -hmm. in life. I'm like, what if those two people met? I mean, it's not quite to this extent, right? But <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to But do you remember Superman 3 where he splits and there's a good one and a bad one? That'd be quite interesting. Get old Roger and new Roger in the same room and see what the conversation Well, there's be your like. Zoom spin-off. We just figured it out. I'll just do that. That's what I'll do. And you could do that time. on Facebook. You could do that on Instagram Live alone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll just do my own episode, my own spin-off of Outlander. I'll probably be sued, though. <laughs> no, they would never. They need you to come back. Um, uh, uh, well, maybe. I assume, I assume so. Uh, that, that is quite presumptuous. But, I would, yeah, we'll wait and see. Um, another question from Twitter. How is your relationship with the twins who play Jemmy on set now? Now, as opposed to when I was on set? I'm hearing rumours that it may have been rocky. I love the twins that play Jemmy. Everyone <laughs> loves those boys. They are the most adorable. They are the cutest thing to walk on set. 
they're such characters. They're such little divas as well. They're, they're, they'll be quite sort of clear about what they want and what's going to happen. Like how many takes they're going to do. So they'll say, I'm doing one take and that's me done. I'm doing one acting and then I'm done. You're like, okay, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if you've heard about the story when I had to shout at him one day. So I had to shout at him. He's just about to touch the pot and burn himself, I think, in episode seven or eight. I think it must be eight. Um, yeah. And he gets a real fright. And I had to sort of reassure him afterwards. I was like, it's only pretending. We're only playing. It's not real. It's like, it's okay, wee man. It's all right. Um, and he was so upset. And I felt like I was betraying him because <laughs> I knew that I'm reassuring him, but we're going to have to... We're going to have to do it again in a minute. So he's like, and he, and he even gave me into such trouble after one take. He's like, don't you ever do that again. You don't ever do that again. Like, oh my God, my heart is breaking. I can't do this to this wee guy anymore. Um, knowing that we're just about to go and do another take. I'm like, what do I do? Do I, just, do I, do I refuse? They, they refuse to go on set. Can I refuse to go on and psychologically affect this child potentially for the rest of his life. And you owe that kid therapy. Well, that's what I'm thinking. And I had to, and I made friends with him at the end and I said, you know, it's all pretend. And he's like, you didn't have to keep doing it. And I was like, well, they make me, they make me do it. Blame them. But I felt so bad and I just felt, and the look, the absolute look of betrayal on his face when I did it again. <laughs> it was a hard scene. It was a hard scene. And the tears obviously that came from him were, he was really upset, he was really crying. And, and I, that, I, that was because of me. I was the cause of that. You're both real method actors. Yeah, we were really in it. We'll, we will work again. We will work again. Matthew and I, we're gonna, we're gonna do some good stuff. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the action sequences this season. You got to punch out Ed Spilliers. Yeah, great feel. You got to beat the crap out of a bunch of people last night. What are, what are those days like on set? Oh, everyone loves the action sequences, right? I mean, did you see John Bell? Like some sort of mohawk ninja. <laughs> oh, there's some great outtakes of him. I don't know if they'll ever come. They might be on the DVD extras. I hope they are. I won't even say what it is, but it's brilliant. Give us a tease. What do they look like? Well, it's, it's action oriented. It's John Bell being mohawk ninja. Um, so you, you just need to wait and see. It's, just, it's a nice moment. It's funny. Um, no, we had, I remember one night in particular, one night we were on night shoots, all of us, and we were doing all of that sort of action sequence, and it's like the heroes of Fraser's Ridge assemble <laughs> and storm the bounds. Um, but we were all having our stunt rehearsals in this kind of warehouse type building. I can't remember where it was. And that was a lot of fun. Everyone would go up and do their fight sequence or sequences. And we'd all take turns about. We'd all stand there watching each other. And uh, it was a kind of, I had never been involved in any of the big set pieces. Um, uh an outlander so it was nice to be it was nice to be uh, part of something like that yeah. and that again that's another real sort of turning point for the character as well isn't it he's like he's getting involved in some actual like action not only that but he wants to do that he wants to be there for that and he wants to kind of you know be there for Claire and the family um, so it's always fun doing the action stuff it's very different especially if it's pure you know if it's pure choreography and pure set piece then there's, there's like a little acting required, put it that way. Just get in there, you have a blast and you know, you just you just go through the motions. It's, it's a lot it can be a lot of fun in spite and obviously contrasting to the content, you know, what we're there for and what you're doing. Um it can be is there have I got an audio issue? Can you hear me already? I can hear you, but I also have my head just keep your hand off the uh Yeah, I'm the, hearing them. Is that better? Is that better? Everyone? I can hear I can hear you better now. That is a cocktail chart behind me, yeah. We'll get into, we'll we'll get into that later. Um, <laughs> um, thanks, for the, thanks for the heads up. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, so the set, they can be a lot of fun, the, the set pieces. You should, when you're filming them, you're only thinking of them in the context in which they're in, which is the fight. You're having, you know, you're doing a bit of choreography, but, you know, and that can, be, that can be quite good fun to throw yourself into. Does it take a lot of prep ahead of time to do that? Yeah, and it can depend on how... Uh, you know, it can depend on how many people are involved, mm -hmm. um, how violent it is, how many people sort of die, what you want the kind of outcome of the, the thing itself to be. So, I mean, it, it all has certain levels of uh, 
threat towards the actors and the mm -hmm. stunt people. So I suppose depending on how complicated it, uh, it is and how complex some of the choreography is, which it can be, um, you'll have more practice until you get it right. Or actually until the actors are really comfortable with it. Um, we have a great stunt team. Um, and, it, you know, it, it, they just make it super easy. Mm -hmm. They go through it. You mark it through really thoroughly, really slowly until the actors are happy picking up the pace. And um, I think a lot of the actors on the show are all quite experienced with um, stunt, fight and sword work. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think I think pretty much all of us are that were involved in the, the, in the fight stuff anyway. Um, so that helps a lot. That's always a bit of a load off for mm -hmm. the, the stunt guys if we already have an idea of, of, of how to do that. That's, I visited set for season three and they showed us the big like armory where all the weapons are. Oh, yes. Yeah, that is a lot of fun. It's really, really cool. And I had no idea. I mean, I knew these departments existed, but I didn't know how big they were. Mm -hmm. And I remember going into the art department, I was only in there once, I think Sam posted the video where he went through it on his bike or something, <laughs> went in there and it was huge, it's absolutely enormous. And I couldn't believe, I mean obviously we have such, we have an amazing art department and they, they, they make quite a lot of mm -hmm. what we use. Um, and they, they keep it all there and it's all kind of catalogued and categorised and it's on two floors and it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Speaking of, you know, sort of art in what we see on set, this is Gary Steele's last season. Do you I have know. a favourite set that you've worked on of his? Oh, God. I, no, I don't think I have a favourite. It's just, it's, that's such a huge part of the show. That's like, you know, a huge player in itself, his character in itself. Um, and I think everyone will agree that it just helps you immediately immerse yourself in the environment or in the, you know, the... the the circumstances in which you know any given scene takes place. Um, I loved the the Mohawk stuff. The Mohawk camp was amazing. The detail that goes into it, the thought that they put into it is so meticulous. It's, it really is incredible. And um, so I suppose the Mohawk one is really up there for me. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the Fraser's Ridge House, that's, that's a make. It's amazing the the. the the minuscule detail that goes into the woodwork and the panelling and it's just, they just, they leave no stone unturned when they're designing these mm -hmm. sets. It's really incredible. Before we get to some viewer questions, what do you know about season six so far? Have you seen any scripts? I, no, I know absolutely <laughs> nothing about season six other than parts of the story that are in the book. That's all I know. Um, okay. So you'll get nothing from me. I don't get believe you, from me. but I don't, I don't know even know that there is. Is there a season six? I haven't heard anything about it. You didn't get a phone call yet. That's not good for you. No. I thought season five was the last season. Don't quote me on that because it's not true. Um, I thought season five was the last one. All right. Let's see some questions on here. Um, let's see. I've got oh, my God. Wait. Lots of, lots of this one. <laughs> You have to actually answer the favourite breakfast question. Oh, are, you, are, you, are you putting these questions before me? <laughs> right. What was my favourite you... breakfast in lockdown? Um, I don't know if up in time for breakfast. <laughs> um, I'm going to say... I'm going to say... I, I, I've gotten really good at making scrambled eggs. Maybe I'll do an Instagram live on that. A scrambled eggs. Do you know what? I found a little bit of yoghurt in there instead of like a... Cream or sour cream, a little bit of yogurt, it's healthier, some chopped chives, trust me, it's amazing. And it's all in the cooking, really slow cook, it's a really <laughs> slow cook, crack those eggs into a cool, a cool pan and then put the heat on. You and really are getting good at cooking then. Hey, I've got time, I've got time. All right, let's see, so let's talk about last night's episode again. How was it for Roger to kill, his, to make his first kill? God, all, the, all the easy questions, eh? Um, Again, that's 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 a major sort of uh, kind of turning point for Roger. Not something that he takes lightly. Roger taking a life is against absolutely everything that he is, um, or certainly that everything that he used to be or everything that he sort of values. Whether or not that's changed and he's not that person anymore, I suppose maybe we'll explore that later on. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't do it lightly, and he's, it's sort of by necessity, and he's. They're forced into this position, I think. Um, and it's all because of, you know, what's happening with Claire and going to get her back. And he's thinking of nothing else other than, you know, we, 
he said when he says there's a time for blood and it's now basically is what he's saying it means that he doesn't wish it but he means it so it's not it's not it's not very black and white what that mm. means and i don't think even it is to him either i don't think the effect of having killed a man will really have kind of uh he'll really have processed that yet but he wouldn't have been able to do that you know a right. season or so ago so i think it says a lot about how far he's come and how far he's come with the family and what he's willing to do what he's willing to do to protect um that family absolutely let's see if there's some more questions on here hmm. oh here's a good one from 508 Richard, have you ever thought about your famous last words would be? <laughs> um, my f no, no, I'm going to be honest. No, I, it's such, uh, I'm, I'm in no position to even imagine what my, my last words might be. My last words might be, um, and no, I can't, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't even think of something funny. We actually had a Twitter question. If, if your students could go on the site, rank my professor, what comments would we see about Professor Wakefield? What kind of teacher is he? Shouldn't we be asking them that? I mean, you have to, this is your what question. What kind of teacher is he? Yeah. I think it would be, God can't wait till Professor Wakefield's next class. The seminars are amazing. Oh my God, he is a dream. You know that, I always, you know that, um, what, it's one of the Indiana Jones movies and there's a student in class and she's blinking and it says, what is it? it says, I love you or something on her eyelids and she's just sitting there like this, blinking at me. <laughs> I imagine that kind of thing. You must get a lot of that kind of thing. I see people in the comments asking, are you growing your hair so you don't have to wear a wig anymore? Yes. That's sure <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Um, oh, are you, another question from Twitter, do you plan on releasing an album of music? <laughs> I'm not a musician. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just not. Um, <laughs> uh, I, would, I, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, it seems like a lot of people want that and a lot of people would be interested in that. So, yeah, you know what, you want to buy my album? I'll release you an album. <laughs> Let's do this. They demand it, the people demand it. Well, you know, you've got to give people what they want, right? Absolutely. Another question from Twitter about 509, I believe. Where is it? Monsters and heroes. There's a fine line between a monster and a hero. What does that mean for you as Richard and for Roger? Well, that's a clever question. Um, what does it mean for Roger? I suppose that is kind of going back to what I'm saying about Roger in 512 and that thing about you know going against his values and his morals and what he stands for and what he's been brought up as and you know he's been brought up by a reverend he's you know he, with quite obviously he will have had a religious background you know um he's going to have things instilled in him that that that, that to break is no is no small thing you know um and i think i think roger is i think he is above anyone else God, that's a statement. I think he's very aware that that, that line exists. Mm -hmm. And I think he tries to tread carefully on it. But I think through circumstance, he is perhaps, you know, he's very finely treading that line and almost into a realm that he's not going to be, you know, necessarily happy with in himself. Um, so I think he's aware of the contrast there. I think he's aware of those two ideas, which I think says a lot about him, really. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, like, you know, the season as a whole, was there anything filmed that was cut that you wish was kept in? Uh, yeah. The, yes. <laughs> yes, there is. Do you, do you care to share? I'm not sure if I'll get in trouble or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think you no, should do it. A scene, there's a scene where Roger and Jamie go shopping for swords, and um, they have a fight. They have a they have a sword fight, and Roger does remarkably well because he's been he's been taught by Jamie for months um, how to fight, how to fight hand to hand combat, and how to fight and how to sword fight. Um, and I, I, you know, I, we, we shoot too much for every ep, right? Mm -hmm. We shoot more than we need. We can't put everything else. We can't put it all in. So some things have to go. But I was like, well, but why that? Yeah. Why that? 
<laughs> no, I'm sure there's, there's reasons for it, I'm sure, but um, I kind of missed that. You and Sam got a lot of good scenes together this season. I love the yeah. one where you're both, where you're like doing the bonnet stakeout and he doesn't show up, but he's teasing you. That was a fun one. Well, I just love the, the, the sort of progression of their relationship um, throughout all of season five. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to play. It was good to work with uh, with Sam and um, we all. I think we all knew, especially the big readers. We kind of knew that was coming for them for Roger. Mm -hmm. and Jay. So I just hope that it fulfilled all sort of expectations of what that would be. And we had a great time, and uh, it was uh, it was it was a very interesting sort of evolution of their relationship. Which was... What is your take on Bree's silence at the end of that episode? Brie's silence at the end of... five. I think it's 509. When Roger asks her if it was mercy or... Was it a mercy kill or was it revenge? I think... I don't, I don't even know if it was almost a rhetorical question. Um, but um, I think he very much respects the fact that, that whatever that moment was, it was for her. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it was for mercy or whether it was to make sure that he was dead or whether it was both. Roger's probably thinking, he knows his wife, he's probably thinking mercy. Um, but I think he's very respectful of the fact that that is her moment. And it's almost like he's voiced his own thought. You know, I don't even know if he expects an answer. Mm -hmm. So I think he respects that silence and thinks, I'll say no more. It's yours. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. All right, let's look for a couple more. So if someone yeah. was asking about the Mercy Kill in episode 511, was it hard to film? Yes, excruciatingly. I walked on set and saw that girl in her makeup and the, oh, with all the bun makeup, and I c could barely hold myself together. I had to, I looked at her and I walked away and I couldn't come back <laughs> until we came to film it again. I thought, I can't look at her. It's, yeah, it's it's heartbreaking. It was gut wrenchingly hard to film that. Just to keep, you know, myself together until the point where he's supposed to get sad was hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually as dark as that is. That's one of my favorite scenes of the season. It was it was it was really tough because that character was supposed to be nine years old and it was so real and she's half buried in the ground and she's got that bun. Oh, it was it was really really tough to film. It was uh, it was hard. What about the peanut butter and jelly scene in 5.11? That's so I, fun. It was a lot of fun. I, listen, I didn't know how much Sophie and Katrina liked peanut butter and <laughs> jelly sandwiches. Apparently a lot. We, we, we filmed those scenes pre-lunch. And I think, <laughs> I think they'd had like, certainly Sophie, I can't remember, I think Katrina was enjoying them too, but Sophie had had like, I don't know, about seven or eight of those things. God, what do you mean? Um, well, the rest of us are trying to kind of nibble like little, you know, little hamsters <laughs> because mm, we don't want to go on a lunch and be, I'm not, you know, I'm not that young anymore, so my metabolism doesn't fire through seven or eight peanut butter, butter and jelly sandwiches in the same way. <laughs> because all the food that you shoot with is real. Most yeah, of it. Yeah, the, the food doesn't do any acting. It's just food. <laughs> That's real food. Our chef's amazing. We have, we have amazing cooks on that show. And they, it all tastes really, really good, which doesn't help matters any because, well, you just, you just, keep, you just want to keep eating it. Like, way, way back in, um, was it season three? I think it was season three where we had the lobster roll thing. They were amazing. Was, really? Oh, yeah. Well, he's eating the lobster roll at Christmas time. Roger. Oh, that's right. I eat about a dozen of them. And I... I it was worth the calories. It was worth it. It was amazing. Oh my God. I was on set the day that Sam filled the holiday party when Jamie and Claire are separated in season three and they brought us all tablet. Oh yeah, tablet. I mean, that's, delicious. That's, 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 that's actually drugs, basically. That's <laughs> that pure makes sugar. It's just pure sugar it. cooked. Pure sugar cooked. But maybe with a bit of condensed milk. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Should we wrap up? Do we cover everything? I think we we'll cover everything. That's the A to Z of, of Outlander. Of season Last one. question so, is, well, how long do we think Droughtlander is going to be, and what do you hope to see for Roger in well, season six? 
how long I, I couldn't even I could not begin to guess. I don't want to put out any sort of um, estimate on how long Droughtland is going to be. Um, hopefully no more than three or four weeks. <laughs> okay. That's my wish. What do you want to see? my wish. It's not what realistic. do you want to see for Roger in season six? Um, I'd like him just to have just a nice chill out, just a nice chill time through season six. You know? <laughs> Start growing some crops. Some vegetables, maybe a new horse. Um, no more locusts. He's not, you know, he's not, he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's a simple man. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's easily pleased. Um, well, no, no, maybe without the locusts, yeah. yeah. It's starting to get too close to reality, I think. <laughs> Outlander's I supposed to be escapism. Yeah, right. All right. Thank you so much, Richard. This was fun. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. Who knows? But I'm a, listen, I'm around, so if you want to do any Instagram lives, um, you know, just let me know. I'm here in about an hour or so, tomorrow, the day after. Only if you promise to sing next time. Ah, we'll talk about that. Okay. We'll talk about that we'll later. Convince you. Thank you. Thanks for watching, Thank everyone. Thanks for having Bye. me. Bye, everyone, and thanks.